Hi, my name is Reese Williams and I'm delighted to introduce you to the Wednesday Group Words First semi-final. Words First is a talent development scheme running throughout 2020. Selected artists have attended digital workshops in July and August where they have worked with Young Identity and its established artists and mentors to develop their work. They have worked with Tolu Agbalusi, Ali Kadema, Shirley May, Nicole May and myself. And the work you are about to see is truly excellent. Two of these poets will be selected by our illustrious panel of judges to take part in a final showcase at BBC Contain Strong Language in Cumbria and will also receive mentoring from spoken word artist Hussein Manawa and rapper Avelino. Our panel of judges includes Matt Fenton, Artist Director of Contact, Zena Edwards, Poet and Patron of Young Identity, Isaiah Hull, 2017 Words First Finalist, and Marisa Draper, Head of Engagement at Home. BBC Words First is presented by BBC Radio One Extra, BBC Asian Network, and BBC Contain Strong Language in partnership with Young Identity, Apples and Snakes, and New Wiki. Without further ado, Let's get into it. Enjoy. Me too. Me too. Sometimes. I feel like lifting my ass in the air, saying, take it away, head bent back, fingers splayed. I was born with a placard in one hand. I let my face do the rest. I lie in bed with empty between my legs and hang it on the wall when I'm done with it. Open up my Barbies real wide and stare. To settle the rocking in my hips, it's comfort, but it's someone else's now. I say my name twice so it makes sense. Say it soft. So they think of all the gifts I came to give the world. The truth in my breast milk for the diversity campaign. They want one more analogy. Used to believe the more beautiful something was, the less likely people were to ruin it. But then look what you did. You made them all pussies, then you made them all pink. I am eyes and gap teeth and only one Scottish ancestor when the lights go out. I look down at smooth skin broken by a rupture. I want to say something holy lies here. Try not to let the sweetness spill. Can't brace the shame of packing it back inside. You want mess, whose hair tucks neatly behind ears. You are starving children in Africa. I'm Woodsy. And this piece is called When the West Went to Rehab. When the West went to rehab, the tests all got revamped. The celebs had a relapse and the rest they can see that. So please clap. Clap for Mother Nature as she enters her recovery. Stand up for the wonder that comes after the worrying. Humans are going into isolation, hibernation. Defined by enough lies that could hide a nation Trained my track so much I could buy the station Standing stationary with my stationary They'll say I'm ready on the day they get me It's like supermarkets looking their super It's like Thanos snapped all the Ubers Can't go to the pub so you turn my house to a wine house And ask Amy about the future look I heard him say Nothing's ever promised tomorrow today They cut circulation off, now we suffer in vain They be watching the throne but can't weather the rain I woke up saying I feel better today Ahead of the game Oh but of course The government went and put us all on pause Families dying whilst disease on tour They cancelled jobs and they cancelled sport They could cancel my life and they could cancel yours Just at the push of a button 
They can destroy countries like anthills and wonder why we're bugging. Human race, yeah, they got us running. Running up walls inside of our minds like life is a game show. Want to save my life, please. Add five. Vote for me. COVID-19's like it's a no from me. Boulevard, the broken dreams on these lonely streets. And I pray for greener days. Where American idiots don't lead the race of humanity Managing all of us, panicking, queuing like mannequins Go to the store and then back again Don't know what they've got in store for the masses and I just want to breathe Without worrying about someone that I care about's next breath It's like my GPS is saying The valley of the shadow of death is on your next left You can't turn back now This is where you turn Maybe this really is a dead end. I didn't audition to be on an episode of Black Mirror, so I'm kind of confused. I wouldn't have done this role even if they paid me five Gs. I don't know about you. How you wear the word. You arrive, hair slipped back with amniotic gel, soft fists and fluffy cheeks. Your parents announce you to the world, lathering you in unrinsable letters. You digest without question, accustomed to force feeding. You arrive. Your mother parks you on the stroller dense maple trees. Life-size dolls loom over playing infant matchmaker, gargling names and spitting out lifetime plans. You arrive, half hiding, darting through flowing skirts, you starfish over toilet, hear footsteps and your body perches daintily as if stalls are transparent. Over sink, the women either side of you slice your breasts with their switchblade eyes. You arrive, watching young and old little peacocks strut in the streets for hours. You fake cough and stretch your tears away. You question their confidence and your uncertainty. You arrive via blackmail, your mother's air freshener hug absent, your mouth a blow dryer for bloody freckles resting amongst beauty spots. You don't know how to keep yourself proud and your family unashamed. You arrive, bending and straightening, unclasping from old letters and gripping new ones. You allow light bulb their ears to nestle on your cushioned thighs. Your arms curl around them like seatbelt. Your lawn chair knees half folding in preparation for bowing head. Your mother arrives, places palm on shoulder, light like dandruff. Disappointment refigures and the uncremating begins. You wish yourself unborn less, body still intact, soul unburnable. My earliest memory, I was three. Watching you from the backseat window, mimicking the expression of yours. Pained. On the pavement, as your eyes followed our car, your three children in tow. A time back when I wasn't embarrassed by your size. Head stretched towards the heavens, worshipping the mountainside our Teodora carved you from. When palms didn't tick further apart. When you breathed without assistance. When nagging you meant tapping your knee for the space between your ribcage. A tonic for settling tummies, making room for round two on your ham and cheese croissants. 
then I was north and you were south. You a stranger and I a daughter of thirteen, seen on Christmases in September, used to games of happy families with white actors for fathers. A distraction from the absence of you. When playground battles were for a culture I didn't belong to. When I was a girl but moaned as a woman as if I knew what I was doing. Rejecting your calls. Nursing 70 CL bottles of glens. Happy in mind, despair in soul. Yearning for identity. You felt heavy on my shoulder, palms resting beneath the heels of your feet. They stood in ranks dressed in black, beneath the sun that hung hollow like shoeless porches. The church bells started to chime. We stepped forward all in time, my cousin to my left, my old man just behind. The whole town seemed to swell with pride. The graveyards whispered memories of how it was here where you were also baptised. We carry you up the steps and the birds come out from the trees and with their wings hold back the wind like ocean cliffs. The weir holds the river from running free and even the dew on the grass refuse to drip. We place you on the plinth. The priest stands, roaming collared like those pints of Guinness you used to sip, sitting in the pub with those beer mats you used to flip. I feel my mother's shoulder shaking, your full-time carer. Your daughter, your best friend, all rolled into one. No hymns can understand this, though I understand why we sing. Let me lower you down with gentle hands now, as men tighten their jaws and children ball, understanding the fragility of it all. I place flowers by your side, nodding to nobody but myself. It is done now, my sister whispers. Let us go, drink and do him proud. It's a hot day, and a sparrow dies in front of me. Exertion proves too much for it. I am going to help it once I finish my fried egg. But then now okay. I spy two bits of roadkill, which were pigeons in a past life. Both lie shadowed and flat. If the human race was negated, then those pigeons would still live, and neither would I write this nor see them. Although perhaps fewer pigeons flap without the existence of chip shops. A dangerous stranger in the form of a magpie dances into our kitchen deposits its tail feathers in the cat's mouth and on the doormat. Another hollow pigeon floats beside me in a river, like flotsam, like jetsam, like mother nature playing poo sticks against me. A silhouetted crow against a darkening backdrop goes in a blink, come the dusk. I wake up this morning to my wings lay pulled off on my pillow. Orange yoked dawn, white and black in my eye. 
I am still here, but the night is not. Today, a great tit will scout out our roof for summer nesting. I will know this because mum will recognise its song. And she will recognise its song because both my great aunt and my grandad were very into bird watching. My great aunt sometimes holding sparrows in her cupped hands. A boulder buried me before my conception. Slowly and alone and ancient and when I devour, I drown. Or I am too violent, a stone to crush mountains. Or I am black water, widener of valleys. And when our genocide of forests has claimed the last glacier. We will see boulders by the ocean, atop mountains in deserts. They are not pilgrims, they are descendants of foreign cemeteries. Diaspora of glass and sheer cliff and ancient and alone, slowly acclimating, but never home. Flashbacks of an enchanting woman that I am not seep into my dreams. She floats, enthralling and stronger than a black mamba. You rotted your children's teeth so yours would look shiny. They smiled up at you to compare the decay. And you smiled back and scooped up the one with the most holes to treat them to a dance against your bare breasts. The others hissed in despair. The funny thing that the invisible bruises can often hurt the most and be the hardest to hide. We hoped for pain because it felt like love and it's all we knew. Glad for you to squeeze us like stress balls. We felt useful. Imagine we used to trust that candy apples were a part of our five a day. Children are impressionable. I remember the mask of your sweet perfumes, jasmine and rose and sandalwood. You just wanted to be admired the most and saw green if we were ever praised too greatly. You bought a huge klimp to hang in our hallway and new games and toys and clothes to show the world that we were happy. But is it a crime to smother someone with love? I remember coming home from my grandmother's and you seething that I smelt like her house and bathing me every day for a week in salt and sage and shasta daisies as if I was tainted. I remember how sex was important to you. So important that you kept him from kissing me goodnight because you wanted to enjoy him fully without the impression of my lips on his cheeks. I do relate to feeling more whole when a man wants me and I give myself to him like a prize. I suppose when something shapes you, it makes you like it in ways. I don't see you when I look in the mirror, but I don't see myself either. I think I have you to thank for turning me into a stranger. Somebody hard to know.
How does it feel to raise a statistic? A dark figure tallying years on trigger happy fingers. He always did have a killer grip. You knew that the moment he seized your finger in his newborn fist. Once he was just a dimple cheat boy. Teachers called him energetic, a chatterbox, a boy with words that could fill his father's shoes. And they called him aggressive. And he started towering over them in his father's shoes, just another boy from the block racing the clock before late night fist fights turned to bloody fists under blue lights. You were nursing a extra shift when they cuffed his wrists. Do you hide his photos when guests are around? You say it's to protect him from gossiping eyes and jabs from judging jaws, but after the laughter staggers out the door and into taxis, you confess. You're ashamed of his mugshot eyes. You keep the heavens up with curses at night, lamenting the hours your knees were rooted in prayer for a son. You curse your womb for delivering him into a system gunning for boys who move like targets. In the morning, you wash your bloodshot eyes. Today is his first birthday away from home and when he calls, all you have to offer him is a mouth full of silence. Do you still love him? You think of the guilty face in the headlines. How could you love him? But you remember him innocent, raising his hands above his head, disarming you with a smile, and you would surrender to carrying him. You remember him before he became another boy from the block, racing the clock before late night fist fights turned to bloody fists under blue lights. You remember him, a son who lost his life and nobody spared a tear for. Everyone must spend some time being bad. After 49 years, God knows you've earned it. Choose the car you've always wanted to steal. Let me smash the window. Outside the pubs, men grind together as regular as teeth in the jaws of one who is always hungry. We ride past figures who spray paint their lovers against walls like graffiti. Tag the city with names they want the night to know past those that vomit their truths into drain pipes, mouths as open as goalposts, shooting for home. This isn't what I wanted to show you, but understand, we grow differently down here in the cracks, are always waiting to be weeded out or burnt by daylight, leave our legacies on newspaper headlines, are far more interesting dead. I've learnt to pray by pressing my foot down against the accelerator and holding my breath. I know I should spend a lifetime repenting for my sins, flog myself daily for the people I have borderlines with tyre marks. But you, my sweet, there's nothing left for you to do. I can't see anything changing St Peter's mind if you, a passenger of sin, were to lean back, put your feet on the dashboard, close your eyes and whisper, Dear God, I'm coming. The acrid scent of narcotic smoke. 
Hallucinations rising high, falling fast. Mouth to mouth, the horror chokes. Abandon hope and lightly float. On an ocean of toxic gas, the acrid scent of narcotic smoke. Hands caress the swollen throat. A disease, opium seed, is passed mouth to mouth, the horror choked. This perfumed torture, the touch of a ghost. Spent bodies, ruined insides, gasp, grasp the acrid scent of narcotic smoke. Blank minds stunted, unable to grow. This night ebbs like the last. Ash, mouth to mouth, the horror choke. It's perfumed torture, the touch of a ghost. Hands caress the swollen throat, mouth to mouth, the horror chokes on the acrid scent of narcotic smoke. Saltad y entrad a la corriente, y soltad vuestras raíces que os atan. Mirad las miradas de vuestros bienhechores expresando confusiones silenciosas como diciendo Speak in civilized tongues. La vergüenza, shame, seeps into las venas. A mi boca aprende, learns, the accent of excellence. My ears forget el son del mar, and I feel so unclean que me lavo hasta sangrar. I believe at the seams for a welcome, y no lo recibo. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, hallowed be thy name. The only constant is the cross on the wall. Los clavos de Cristo, a warning. Refugees from the idea of poverty, buscando asilo political asylum in a suburb. Rest your weary head on drywall pillows and asphalt beds, and dream of a summer cruise, white picket fence, and market blues. Once you have passed the test, you may wear your green card on your breast, a badge of honor indicating that you are well on your way to becoming a gringo. But the Ouroboros is hungry, and it's never quite enough. One day you'll come to terms with the knowledge that this current goes nowhere. Siren call cutting through street light night, there's someone at the door. Plastic men responding to a disturbance that someone might have been making tamales. Good evening, sir. Vuelve. May I come in? Vuelve. Okay, but don't let it happen again. Vuelve contra corriente agua fresca suplicándote volver mijo a calores prohibidos por burocracias ajenas. Dejar los caprichos de la economía, la luz lívida de celdas educativas y la deuda política de sangre subyugada. Por tierra dulce llama viva, que te han llamado toda la vida, invocando canto incendiario dentro de ti. Sueño con las tierras de mi madre, y sol bendecido. Sueño con los cerros de mi padre, y mar infinito, aluviones de contracorriente. Vuelve a mí, vuelve a mí, vuelve a mí. Black boy from the Midlands, searching for some guidance of who he was and who he is today. Caribbean boy, what exactly represents my Caribbean heritage? Because besides food and music, I feel like I'm irrelevant. And most of the food is from a slave diet. Oxtail, saltfish, now I can't stay quiet. And the music is a direct product of our pain 
and how a cane roll hairstyle is a direct product of the cane. Apparently I'm a West African from the West Indies that grew up in the West Midlands and I've become westernised after so much change of identity. Tell me where are my Western rights? Most of my life I've had to work twice as hard and still become generalised so you can pay me twice as much plus tax for the genocide. I don't want no 40 acres and a mule. I don't read newspapers, I'm no fool. Look, don't get me started about how many times they've been telling lies. I've even been to Caribbean food stores, I can't spell it right. One R, two Bs, it's not hard to see. That arguably, Patois is the largest used dialect in the UK and the language is not even traditionally ours. So get your degree or roam the streets. I know it's peak, but we do have economical power. The world likes our physical strength when cutting canes of sugar, but never in a rush to come and support us when we stand for something. And let's wrap the carnival where we sing, dance and eat like a carnival. Too much Bob Marley, not enough Marcus Garvey. It's something I can't ignore. I see young African men speak to each other in native tongue and it's beautiful, but I feel left out, like the younger sibling not old enough to go to the shop by himself. We celebrate infidelity, violence and weed, but really we're crying for help. Talk about disconnect. I don't even know how African I am. An ancestry that called out UK wants me to pay the same system that stole me. Talk about a scam. And our parents want us to work, 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 work. But what we need to work on is unpacking all of that. Hurt, 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 hurt. But despite all the politics, I'm just here living my life as a young, healthy, happy person. I do love my Caribbean heritage, but I feel like so many of us, we carry burdens. Six years ago, the system stole my sister. It said she's mentally ill, remove her, from this society that won't cater to her. Her manner could not conform, dimming her shine would never be her norm. To the blind she makes not breaks the storm, she is fire and we are lukewarm. So they sent her away. To live with strangers in an unsafe space, she was getting punched in the face by women that hadn't seen their kids for days. Swallowing rocks, she was in a haze, bars looming over her from where she lays. She was a baby. Eighteen, but still. Places like that make people ill. Stuck in isolation, forced to pop pills, punching someone in the face is a way to feel. A red circle on her chest every time she cried. Just months before this, our dad had died. Not enough space to take it in her stride and the weight of her mind made it hard to hide. She was moved five times in Brum. At one place, she broke the fire escape using her bum. <laughs> True story. But there was zero stimulation, just unrest for her duration. No one paid mind to her education, but the decision makers made it to their graduation. Their degrees are now my sister's collation, pinning her down until full deflation. She was moved again. This time she was there for eight months and she didn't leave the building once. We visited as often as we could. It was never good. 66 miles and two staff had to be with us listening to everything that got discussed like what the fuck? Our right to family time was took. The next place, she could call us, but we couldn't call her back. I had 33 missed calls once. Anything could happen and we wouldn't know Jack. And the doctor there gave her a new diagnosis. Just like that. <clears throat> I, um, I know I've only known you for five months and I'm leaving in three weeks, but we need to move you along and I've got a degree. So if we whack on this disorder of personality, we'll get you a bed in no time. You'll see. That doctor wanted to tick boxes before he leaves. My sister's not a box. She lives and she breathes.
Ryoka's stained lips and blood red skylines. Under a Pomona bridge, we search for home on tram lines. It's early in the morning. We're in warm embraces, cornering shoulders in secret conversations. We always find each other in these strange situations with wild eyes, bellies butterflied and dancing, dilated. This friendship bloomed whilst sofa swelling through home-cooked dinners and storytelling, on magic bus back rows, on pedalled fast hedgerows, on I'll walk you back home. I was never alone, even though at times I thought I was. We fell in love with youth at 22, upon reflection of ourselves. I like to think we cared for each other harder than the others I've seen, the sort to draw up battle plans for each other's grief, the sort to fill up your family funerals, the sort to redefine that word family as a metaphor, the sort to knock round yours without warning, the sort to take a corkscrew to all those bad thoughts that bottle up, a gentle reminder that pain does not age well when left unopened. I wonder if it's possible to feel nostalgic for life lived in the present, I know this is nothing short of living out glory days under disposable flashes and sepia tint. I document us growing up in glossy print, ensuring love does not fade when aged memories go amiss, forever stamped in albums labelled Hide From The Kids. Look at the pack that we developed into. Elongated evenings in colourful living rooms was the glue. I collected them all together and paraded them in gallery hallways like a proud curator. Look at what I'm made of. Future conversations with grandchildren saying, listen up, kids. Those loyal friendships will be your achievements of the highest form. This will be what keeps you warm when those December blues start tuning their instruments. When this anxiety EP starts scratching itself against the vinyl in your chest. But for now... I'm under a Pomona bridge. I've got high spirits filled in my disposable cup. I've got null responsibilities and I've got chemical love. I've got tie-dye hoodies, but ink doesn't run. We've got matching tattoos. This goes deeper than blood. God help me when these glory days are over. When old age finds me lonely, divorced and cold sober, when my stomach is sagging and seizures stealing my mind, I'll gorge myself on these memories for one last time whispering on my deathbed, thank you to my best friends. That was one hell of a ride. Merlot is the memory of the friend, reprimanded for shouting after his brother was murdered and his mother put herself to rest with wine. He didn't make it. No one deserves to be shouted at, is what my employer told me after I was told to stop acting like a hoodlum, saw a scarlet and paved the inside of their eyelids with Merlot. My nightmares would no longer be mine alone. I'm tired. How did you spend your 21st birthday? Sleeping in a gym toilet, Houston station and on a bus between the two. Have you ever seen someone die? Ever jumped from a balcony, running from whatever incarnation of death was beating its way through a barely hinged door? Do you wonder if it would have been more practical to have died upon landing? I see colours. Next up, the Houses of Parliament discuss the tragic epidemic of homelessness within London. Let's head to the studio for a brief update. When was the last time you were held at gunpoint? Was that at the hands of those paid to protect you or of the pipes of the pipes? Whose coliseum were you born into? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Absolutely riveting, you heard it here first folks. In other news, temperamental hoodlums exhibiting signs of blackout, moth trap red will be held accountable for their actions. I see colours, 
Sometimes I want to numb my mind So crimson dissolved ocean Maybe one day I'll bleed it out Serve way with sour to biscuits Have you ever yearned for the return of a smile Who wanted nothing other than to write change Into a world of futures He tried to make it You could find him in McDonald's at 4am every morning Studying his way out of a gutter He tutored his mother through school Before he was old enough to have taken his GCSEs To buy her a house was his most cherished plan Before he grew tired They called him Superman He is the blood red of my palate And the cure to cancer that was never allowed to happen He is a soil stained ruby Born cardinal and yet into his grave The death of another unarmed man Has been marked a Lawful killing. <laughs> Say his name. We're ready to talk now. I am <laughs> overcome with cults. <laughs>